Hi everyone, I am Ben. I am back with hashtag I am whole to talk about all things digital detox today. We're gonna to be tackling the tricky subject of social versus reality. The murky world of are we real, are we not real? What's authenticity? Who are you? Who am I? I am so excited to talk with some amazing human beings. I'm joined by Sasha, Tyrell and Megan. This is gonna be so good, let's jump straight into it. I'm gonna start with a, a question that you might not have been prepared for. What is your relationship like with social media in one word? Go. One word. One one word. Mm. I will accept hyphens. Stressful? Yeah, cute. I like that. Unhealthy. Oh. Ooh. Chaotic. Chaotic. Yeah. Okay, I feel like I know where we're gonna be going. <laughs> I'm very excited. So I guess like my first question to you all, do you feel like you have a different persona online versus you know maybe the person that your mum knows i i think i pride myself on being who i am online yeah. in real life and i i feel lucky that i've managed to navigate social media in that way i think maybe because i came into it a little a little bit older sure i don't think i would have had that control if i'd have started at 15 say yeah however as much as i am the same person i don't and can't like capture everything so those really low moments that it's just impossible for me to portray that on social media so there's still a huge portion of my life that is not portrayed you know in the reality and that's because unless you had a film crew with you 24 7 mm. i don't think anybody can okay that's a really good point because that's the um the difference between trying to be authentic and yeah. then performing authenticity yeah. yeah because it is a really unnatural thing to be having a freaking meltdown yeah and pull out your phone and film it and you know some people do yeah. that and sometimes yeah. it's useful to see that but then it creates a really odd dynamic for you internally yeah. of like am i feeling my emotions or am i performing yeah. my yeah. emotions for other people yeah and it, i guess it's going to work differently it's going to feel differently for everyone right i i know that when i'm crying the last thing i want to do is film myself to help someone else i'll like mm. i'll try and help someone else another way but you don't need to see me having a meltdown no yeah i, I think i respect people that can do that i mean i've not i've very rarely like gotten that emotional whilst i'm like making a video or posting a picture or anything like that just because by the time i've got the camera set up and the time of like i'm ready to do what i need to do I've dealt with whatever made me feel like that before mm -hmm. I feel record. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And in a, in a manner of speaking, that almost feels like I'm like policing how I like uh, portray myself online because I know right five minutes before this video, even though this looks really happy and cool, I was just crying. And like, mm. you know, though I'm not trying to like hide the fact that I was. Mm. Once the camera's on, I'm focused on what I need to record, and like I I keep those two things quite separate. So I, I, I'm almost envious of people that can like happily sort of like merge the two. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So I guess what we're saying really here, when we're talking about the social versus reality, it's not that we're different people. It's just, we've got boundaries on what we're prepared to share. Yeah. yeah. And I think that would probably come into your answer with your life and everything that goes on with who you are. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's an, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because some people would say it's just being professional. Like right. you wouldn't turn mm. up to any job well. You should be able to be your full self. Yeah, yeah, you should be able to, you know, have a bad mental health day or job or whatever. But for most people, they yeah. do, you know, they they kind of- Yeah, you couldn't have a meltdown on the tills at Tesco. Carol, if you do want a meltdown at your till at Tesco, I don't care. I don't need you to back my carrots. <laughs> have your meltdown, have it. We support your mental health, yes, Carol. We yeah, we do, we do. Um, and I think, also I think for me, whether I'm the same person, I'm not a completely different person, mm -hmm but the internet is getting a heightened version. You're getting yeah. a heightened version right now. That's just the We're nature of- clothes. Hello, yes, <laughs> I have a bra on, okay? <laughs> I wouldn't have that at home with my mum or, yeah. or my sister or anyone. That's just the nature of having a camera on you. And that's a really yeah. natural thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's, um, that shouldn't be something that like we point at and say, you're fake, you're yeah. inauthentic. It's just, yeah. Yeah. it's just what happens. It's like funny mm -hmm. you say like being different on, on camera versus like with my mum. Cause like my mum's seen some of the videos that I've made and seen my interviews and that. And she's been like, who on earth is like, like, why are you speaking mm. so eloquently? And how are you not stutter? I stutter a lot in general <laughs> sure. and I talk fast. But well, that's kind of when I'm comfortable, like with my family or whatever. So she's like, when I'm talk talking to camera or I'm interviewing someone, I, I'm i not trying to not be myself, but I'm trying to like, you know, communicate a message very clearly. Mm. So I talk a bit slower and like, yeah, maybe with a bit more energy. Um, So I come across a lot, probably a lot more confident in general than I am yeah. in real life. And I think that's your point, Megan. We're being professional. Yeah, It's our job. Right. But that's still being authentic, isn't it? You're still, you're being authentic to yourself, mm. 
by being, you know, adapting to the situation that you're in, whereby mm. you feel you need to present yourself in a certain way. That's still yeah. to me being authentic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have a very strange relationship with this because I sometimes feel like in order to be my best self online, I have to almost play myself because there are a lot of times when I'm not able to be the person that you see before. So I live in a very small rural village. If I stepped out of my house looking like this, I'm not saying they'd stone me, but I'm saying I'm going to have an altercation with someone in their 60s and it's going to get heated. Mm -hmm. So I feel like sometimes you are getting the best version of me. And I've had really long conversations with my therapist where I feel very almost split from my online person persona. And I feel like that can be a very difficult thing to feel. Do you ever feel like you look at your phone and you're like, that's not me? Do you ever experience that? I think if, just going off what you said, we have to accept our privileges, right? Mm. And I know that I wouldn't have that in a small town and I'm also from a small town. So my version of being authentic to yours is gonna mm. be very different because you're still, we're living in the same world where still you wanting to be a certain way is not accepted the way mm. that it should be, right? So I commend you for that because that can't be easy. <laughs> um, I think there are definitely moments where I perhaps post something because I need to post because it's my job and I've got a contract and I'm like, oh, if only they knew how that job looked for me or sure, yeah. how I felt when I was filming it or what happened on the phone call before. Mm -hmm. you, you just can't physically show everybody that it's impossible it mm. would be impossible to do that have there have, have there been posts that can you think of that don't really reflect where you were in that moment i've got i'm gonna go first because we're gonna be vulnerable when i launched my book the the weeks leading up to that the posts are all very joyful and uh i just lost my grandfather and i'd just been broken up with and i was suicidal and it, that wasn't who I was online, but it was my job and I had to do it. Mm -hmm. And I look back at those posts and I remember a very different reality to what my followers would have seen. Do you have any posts that you feel are very incongruous to how you were feeling at that moment? Or if you don't, how you've managed to make that happen? I'll come to you so first. I've got it. one post that's like in the moment, like if you're watching it from the outside in, looks like one of the best experiences of my life. I went to central London, I, I was doing like a like a brand a picture thing um, where basically I got my photo taken and they put it on the big billboard in Piccadilly Circus. So it's above. amazing, isn't so, it? Oh my God, that was crazy. Billboard, baby. I know, it was, it was like, I was like, oh my God, like they, they said it was gonna happen. They said, but I didn't really mentally prepare myself. Mm -hmm. They were like, it's gonna be up for like 30 seconds. The billboard glitched and it was up all day. <sighs> um, I was wow. taking a picture in front of it. I turned around thinking it's gonna go away. It's gonna go to the next person. And it was just me, you know, like, yeah, it's broken. We're just gonna fix it at seven <laughs> o'clock at night. I'm like, great, I guess. And in the moment, in the pictures, I'm there smiling, I'm smiling on the screen, but it, the the, pic, the camera they took it on, they wanted to show how good the camera was. So the camera's like zooming in really close <gasps> to my eyes and all of my pores and lines and all of that stuff. And from the, again, outside looking in, wow, Terrell's on a billboard, that's so exciting. Inside, I was panicking. I sure. was on like, I got home and I was de devastated. I thought, okay, 30 seconds, I can deal with it. The whole day, everyone's staring at every like, tiny little crease in my face and like seeing every single, I don't know, detail of my face mm -hmm. that I myself am not fully secure sure. with, you know, I'm not even wearing like makeup or anything in that picture as well. It's just purely raw because I just didn't think it was going to be that, I don't know, aggressive and high quality yeah. or up for that long. Always wearing full face forever now, just in <laughs> yeah. case. I was like, okay, yeah, next time this, uh, someone says they're going to take a picture of me, I'm double checking everything yeah. before I know what's going on. Um, but again, like I posted it online and I was like, this is so cool guys, look, mm -hmm. come on, I'm in uh, Piccadilly Circus. And everyone's like, wow, it's amazing. Everyone's supportive. Everyone's like really happy about it and says it looks good. But me, I'm just sat there like, broke even my mom's like oh my god that's so good like well done and i'm just like yeah like i literally mm -hmm. felt devastated and this is interesting how like how people perceive you online versus how you actually feel yeah it can be entirely different no matter how you know good and crazy it may mm -hmm. seem you can feel entirely differently mm -hmm. yeah that's incredible yeah. and for you megan do you have any posts that you're like i'm not what you saw i think for me a lot of the time it comes down to content that involves other people. Sure. It's content that yeah. uh, includes my personal relationships. And it's that line between I'm respecting other people's privacy because I'm not airing all their fucking business mm. every single time I show them on my profile. And am I still portraying something real? So like sure. in former relationships, am I just showing the couple goals? This is, I'm, I'm the happiest ever. And then actually the reality of that is always more complicated. Isn't it? Or, you know, content with 
my sister, I do quite a lot of content with my sister Gemma. Um, I'm her carer. That can be a challenging relationship. Sure. You know, yeah. that's that's a, sometimes difficult. Mm. But of course I only show the happy, having fun. Like we have this great sister relationship and we do, we do, but there's always another side of it. And I sure. think, um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to make people understand that without just airing everything. Yeah. yeah. Do you, how do you manage that? Do you like give the nuance or do you just show the great relationships? I totally agree that it's when there's other people involved, that's where for me, I feel like you're not getting the full picture here. And yeah. that's because you're trying to respect the other people involved. Um, I would say for me, my biggest thing is actually quite recently is my wedding. Um, it, it just, weddings just are those things, aren't they? They're big, shiny, fantastic, glorious things that everyone looks at, you know, you're not, posting anything but your wedding photos, Join which are like the nicest photos you've ever had in your life. Mm -hmm. Can I talk about all of the stress and drama and family nightmares that led me to wanting to cancel it and thinking what on earth am I even doing and nearly breaking up with my partner before because the stress just got to us over something so ridiculous? Yeah. Obviously not. Mm -hmm. I can't post that because there are other people involved. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels like a silly thing to say like my wedding, but it is just, it's like, a poignant thing in my life where so many other people were involved in the stress that you can't you can't show everyone that yeah and i think in that urge to protect not only the people you love that you're around but also yourself there are things that we will all have learned to now we're not going to share again we're not going to do that again like i i'm implementing the kendall jenner rule so she has this rule where she has to be with someone for a year before they even consider going on the set of all their reality shows right. mm. and i have learned that yeah. the hard way of like sharing a moment and then it's gone wrong and it's right. like i now have to silently and slowly archive that one post mm -hmm. because i don't want to talk about it and so it's, I, I guess there's this idea that sometimes reality means what people assume is everything of your life, but we, yeah. we can't be in the position to give everyone everything. everything. Mm, yeah. And, and that's hard as well because you want, like when you are as, you know, portraying yourself online in an authentic way and a genuine way, you probably in certain circumstances feel like you could yeah. share those things because yeah. you know it will help other people. Mm. And you want to sort of say, oh, actually this is the reality of that. But when other people are involved, it's it's not that simple. Those people aren't online. They don't have a, a presence online. No. And yeah. yeah, and you know what? If you decided to share everything, like say you're, you're in a relationship, you had a horrible yeah. argument and your partner said something shitty to you. If you decided to just air that out and put it online, that's one moment of that person being imperfect and they will have the reputation from that forever. forever. Yeah. 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 You can't take it back. Yeah. Like that's the tricky thing and people are always changing and growing so yeah and then it's hard because then it's your your i guess audience are seeing that but then from the flip side of it now they've only got that one point of view mm. of that person so that terrible thing that they've done that's their entire personality yeah and like me as an audience member i'm looking at that being like well i don't know that he like saves puppies on the weekends like i'm do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like yeah like, now he's just the, who they are they're just the villain um right. and that's yeah that's can become dangerous as well especially if they don't have social media yeah. then they almost have no way of like yeah you know covering their back or like if they are you know terrible then they're terrible whatever but say it was like one really bad 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 moment and doesn't sum up who they are they are have no way of like rectifying, covering, that. rectifying it covering yeah. for themselves yeah I would yeah. also like to say you don't have to rescue puppies to be a good person. <laughs> there are thousands of ways to be a good person and you can find them all by following me. Um, no, I'm joking. <laughs> so I think the conversation of social versus reality, what we're actually talking about here is safeguarding, right? We're talking about the people we want to protect, but also the relationships we want to protect and also the relationship we have with ourselves. Obviously, we're talking about this in the context of social media. Do you think that social media has warped what reality now means to all of us. Because when we talk about social media, it's our jobs, so it is our reality. But what people see of us is not the full version of us, so it's not reality. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you think about that too much, it gets too much. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I definitely have moments where I think about it too much and it gets too much and I'm like, yeah. actually, what is going on? Sometimes if I edit a vlog, right? and I cut out an entire section of something I'm talking about, but the words either side match up. That's just me doing it on iMovie. Mm. I know that I've cut out this huge segment of me talking about something and it still looks like I'm in a fluid sentence. Yeah. 
no one watching that is ever going to be able to see that and that's like at the most basic level of editing mm -hmm. and there's some you know and it's not anything like sinister it's just i was chatting too much shit so i wanted to cut it out like that is as simple as that mm -hmm. again it comes in you're being professional yeah. yeah um but it's it's one of those things where like you know that what's the phrase you give someone an inch and they take a mile like, yeah it is a bit like that on social media and you say one thing and you're open and vulnerable and people think that you should be open and vulnerable all, all the time all yeah. the time yeah. there's an expectation so, from you yeah. yeah so for me i I'm, I'm like quite what's the word that i'm looking for i'm quite aware because mm -hmm. it's my job but i do i think i worry about the people who kind of are looking and comparing mm -hmm. and thinking oh they must be so happy today or they must get given everything and have such a great life because mm -hmm. that's all they're seeing yeah, yeah. And the same with you, Megan, because like I look at your career, your social media footprint, and like I'm obsessed. But that's not Ooh. everything, is it? Okay. What are your assumptions based uh, on my social profile? Oh no. Be People, be honest. No judgment. That you're incredibly successful. That you are where I want to be when I'm a grown up. <laughs> right. That's and like that's very sweet. And and there was a time as well, like six or seven months ago, you, you had it all. And I was like, shit, why don't I have it all? And there was a little bit of pressure. Okay. It's really weird. But at the time you wouldn't have felt like you had it all, right? I've, I don't think I've ever felt like so that. So like <laughs> even just us posting, I guess we're distorting reality. Yeah, mm -hmm. I am. Um... I love you by the way. <laughs> I'm starting to feel the same way. This is, <laughs> right. a, this is a new blossoming connection. <laughs> I think the thing about social media that none of us realized when we signed up for it and that most everyday users don't really realize is that it flattens us. Mm -hmm. It flattens humans mm -hmm. into these one dimensional uh, things, not even full people. Yeah, um, we're products now. Exactly, yeah. we're just in these little tiny squares. And for me, that's been the hardest thing to get back is being a full human and I think also that's not the fault of the person who's creating the content because we learn, we learn through the algorithms of these platforms that people want one dimensional, like snappy one liners yeah. and clickbaity posts mm. and super intense emotions. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we become all or nothing. We become these extremes of ourselves. We yeah. learn that yeah. that's how you are successful on these platforms and actually getting your humanity back is hard because yeah. a lot of the time people don't want to see it if that's not what they signed up for right mm -hmm. yeah. um they don't want to see us be full humans and um that's been a real challenge for me is reclaiming that reality mm. and and valuing that more than engagement yeah yeah i suppose I it's like that. hiding that messiness it's, it's the messiness that's become uncommodifiable i, I mm. often think about and i look directly at you too as well because we're from marginalized communities we've almost become like intersectional Pokemon, like you've got to collect them all. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like, so for me, if I don't talk about something that's to do with the trans and non-binary community, I'm not doing my job properly, yeah. right? And there's that pressure. And it's, again, I really think about this with, with what you just said, Tyrell, it's that what I look at your career and I see all these amazing things that you do and I'm like, I'm obsessed. And then you're sat at home, like really like distraught about imperfections yeah. that no one else cares about yeah mm. and so how do you feel like that reality distortion is working for you i so reality distortion is something i'll struggle with because i think i've got in, in in a good way i've got a very healthy relationship with my followers where they're very very nice and very friendly and they'll always be like wow nice like followers who yeah, are they well, i know imagine <laughs> sorry um, if you are a follower of me i love you <laughs> <laughs> No, but they, they, they're very like compliment though. I might get like, I don't check my DMs that often, but I get a nice DM or in my sort of ask me anything. So people sure. will say, wow, like I love everything you do. I want to, you know, do what you do. Um, uh, People say that they're jealous or whatever and stuff like that. And that, I almost worry when I see stuff like that because I'm like, I appreciate it. You know, the good stuff that I do, you know, it's, it's fun, it's cool, mm. whatever. And from the outside looking in looks really, look really great. But like you said, because you're not seeing the in-betweens of like that event and that event where I've just yeah. got like nothing going on and I'm depressed and I'm, you know, going through something evil, but myself personally, my family, my friends or whatever, you wouldn't know. I'm like, I, I, I really don't really post that sort of stuff online. And I, depending on how serious it is to me, I don't really like to like share that sort of side of myself. And like, I'm comfortable with that relationship with social media. But I get worried about how, especially a lot of my young audience kind of see it. They just think, wow, like he goes from event to event and he makes this yeah. video and that mm. video and it's all high quality and glossy and all that stuff. And I'm like, 
that's not my reality. Yeah, yeah. I'll get to do these like, really cool things and I'm happy at, like, that I get to, but like, realistically, like I, I'm my, I, do, I struggle with mental health the same way everyone else yeah. does. You know what I mean? I have my own personal issues, family issues, mm-hmm. insecurities that just doesn't really get communicated online that much. Yeah. And it's, it's like I said, it's hard to find a balance, like because no matter how, I guess, honest you seem, you're, you are almost always like a character. Mm. Yeah. Like you're almost, like my, I guess, brand is kind of be that, that nice guy that talks about sure. movies and stuff mm. online. Um, so the minute I turn around and I go, oh, actually guys, I'm feeling quite depressed today. I yeah. can't make content. It's like breaking news. Oh my gosh, everyone's got to like, you know, check in and stuff like that. I was like, nah, it's just, these are just normal things. Like I go through it all the time. Yeah. It's not like something specific happened to me. I just go through these things and I, it, I don't know. It's, it's hard. I, I want to say keep a good balance, but I'm very aware of what, that balance might look like to somebody else. Sure. Just sounds like you're putting a healthy boundary in place. I like to think so. Which is nothing to be scared of. And I think it's really important to stress at this point, uh, without disclosing ages, we're all millennials. And so we have grown up for a short time without this sort of need to be online, without this need to be the brand. And so we've had the permission to go into it. We can see it as a job. Whereas I think perhaps now for a younger audience, if you're a Gen Z, A, your skin is gorgeous, you don't need to wear makeup and I hate you. (laughs) Well, you don't hate anyone, but like, I wish I had small pores, is what I'm saying. But you, I've literally lost my own train of thought though. Your pores are really small as well. I know, I'm a Leo and compliments on my love language. (laughs) (laughs) I'm always like, I look like a mess and people go, no, you don't. I'm like, I guess you. (laughs) (laughs) But I think the point I'm trying to make is, if you're a younger person on social media, you probably think you need to turn yourself into a brand to be successful, yeah. which you do not. And I guess that's almost like my next point is for all of us, what do you think is right now the most damaging thing about social media? It's a nice light heart chat, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Where do we begin? Can we do, can we do both? Can we do like... Well, empowering was my next point. So okay. how about you give me your damaging and then we'll, as like a counterpoint, what you love and you find empowering. Okay, I like Is that. Is that right? That, yes, baby. Always a negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of damaging, sure. I would say, I mean, I hate, I even hate the words, but like the idea of what perfection looks like. Um, but from like a like visual standpoint, like, oh, this person has like smaller pores. Oh, wow, their skin's amazing. Their body's amazing. That sort of stuff. That is damaging to... I think anybody, I don't, I don't care where you are in your sort of body journey, you, sure. you see someone else that's, you know, that kind of fits society's sort of version of what the norm mm. is or what beauty is and stuff like that. As much as you want to be mature and be like, no, it's okay, I'm I'm strong or whatever. It's still, when you see it over and over again, it still kind of it affects your mind, but also perfection in terms of like where you are in life, like sure. career relationships and stuff like that. Mm. If I see someone posting like that they're in a happy relationship, married house, kids, I'm going to this event and that event, I'm doing all these cool things. Sometimes I look at that and I'm like, wow, we're the same age. What's going on here? How do yeah. you do that? And I'm not doing that. Um, and like I said before, as, as much as that, that's how I view other people, I'm I'm sure with my social media presence, that's how other people see me. And I'm very aware, especially when it comes to like, young ages, mm. I know for a fact I've got a lot of like sort of like, early teens and sure. like, following me and watching me and stuff like that. And I know how I felt when I was a teenager and I looked at celebrities and I watched these superhero movies with, with these guys with huge abs and they're doing all these cool things. Um, and I looked at that and I felt like, wow, I needed to be like that. So I can only imagine the, the viewpoint of the teenagers mm. that watch like social like social media creators and stuff and like models and all that that have the same viewpoint. Um, and I don't even know if it's it's the, the social media itself, but it's more, I guess, how people perceive it, right? Yeah. I mean, some people are just naturally in great shape, naturally have great skin. They can't help that, you know what I mean? Um, but I guess how people view, I guess, their idols, um, in, on social media can be like one of the most dangerous things. Yeah, I think it's funny as well, because sometimes people will say something to you and you're like, what? Like sometimes I'll get DMs about, um, so I'm fat apparently, and they'll DM me and be like, I wish I could be as brave as you are with your body size. And I'll literally deadpan reply, what, what are you trying to say? Like, I don't think of this as bravery. Yeah. Mm. I like food and I, I like, I'm naturally, big and that's not something I've overcome mm-hmm. you know it's I think we we forget that some things aren't a journey yeah. some things haven't been but like people can remind you that they think somehow you're brave or you've been worth less 
It's mm. weird, isn't yeah. it? That drives me insane though, because they're basically saying like, oh, poor you, like you're doing so well. Like, yeah. what? I don't you're, go to the gym you're... at 5 a.m. I have a great life. <laughs> <laughs> the lions are stunning. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not up before 9 a.m. I'm so sorry. I think it would be ridiculous for me to not mention how damaging I think filters and photo editing sure. is, uh, having come from doing all of that. But like, I, they're just so <laughs> clever and they're so subtle and they can just make you addicted to this version of yourself that just does not exist. Like yeah. not even plastic surgery could make you look that good. Yeah. And it's so damaging to, to attach your self worth and your self image on something that is so unrealistic to achieve. Yeah. And I, I think I panic about it so much because I know how addicted I was to the sure. validation that my edited photos gave me back in the day. What were you trying to achieve, can I ask? It's a really personal the, question. But... The like complete beauty society standard, okay. right? So for me, I have always been curvy, if that's the like box I have to be put sure. into or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that what we say now is midsize, don't we? Yeah, well, Whereas, even that's a bit problematic, isn't, isn't it? Mm. I, I love you midsize people, but you do not need your own category. No, we don't need the label. It's not our space. <laughs> but you know, everyone needs, everyone seems to want to label everything, yeah. right? Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is theoretically I was curvy, yeah. but to be curvy, I still needed to be in proportion. Therefore I needed to be five foot 11 with a big bust, small waist, big bum, right? Right. So I wasn't any of those things, but I was still curvy. It's hard to live up to how I look, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think like I was always trying to chase what I saw in magazines and what I was comparing right. myself to on social media because we kind of do live in a world where unfortunately beauty is like it's the everything. highest, is everything. Mm. Yeah, like everything revolves around how beautiful you are. Especially if you're not a cis male. Yeah. You have to be beautiful for, to be successful. Yeah. At this moment in time. And it's, and I like, oh God, I do hope it changes, but it is prioritized it for everything. Um, and I think the filters and the editing and the ability to make yourself that, to, to put yourself in that box by editing and filtering your photos is really, really fucking scary mm -hmm. because anybody can do it. Doesn't matter what you look like to begin with, the tools are out there to make you fit into that box. Yeah. I think the scary thing is when someone else does it to an image of yourself and yeah. you weren't expecting. When I get pictures back from a day and I'm like, I know there's three creases on my forehead and you've touched them all out. That yeah. I hate. Mm. I hate that when someone's done that without my permission. That's really yeah. strange. And so what for you do you find damaging, Megan? But what also do you find empowering? Because that is maybe like one of the cornerstones of your online persona is to empower, right? Attempt to. Yeah, I think you do it very well. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, I think, yeah, those are both spot on. Uh, another really scary thing for me about social media is the sheer amount of voices and opinions yeah. and events and trauma. And in yeah. every single scroll, we're taking in like literally more than our brains are evolved yeah. to take yeah. in. If you think about 150 years ago, maybe you knew what was going on with 30 people who lived in your local area. It would take like yeah. a fortnight to get news from like the next town. Exactly. Yeah. And now in one <laughs> like scroll- Like Pete has just died from the pox. <gasps> Gosh. <laughs> But now I could get that information straight away. There'd be yeah. a hashtag about, was it Pete? It was Pete Pete the with pox. the pox. R.I.P. Pete would be trending. Pete, if you are watching, I've got Dr. Christian from Embarrassing Bodies. He's going to sort you out. <laughs> <laughs> but along with Pete with the pox, it's like the opinions of thousands of thousands. people. You take mm -hmm. it all in in five minutes. And I think so few of us really understand what that's doing to our brains. Like we take in all of that and then we wonder why we can't sleep at night or our brain is racing or we're, you know, obsessed with what everyone thinks of us yeah. and, mm -hmm. and who we are in the mm. world. And it's just so much. Yeah. Have um, you noticed it in yourself as well? Like what your brain can handle? Because I definitely have noticed that if it's not caught my attention within five seconds, mm. I'm out. Yeah. Mm. And I swear to God, it used to be five minutes. And now do you not find when you're doing something that in, like it requires your full attention, you give yourself something else to distract. I'm yeah. doing mm -hmm. like a difficult email and I'm found, I'm scrolling on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. It's like my brain's like, I don't want this, I want this. Yeah. It's yeah. really... Yeah really frightening that's like we like tv and stuff like that i struggle i mean the, half of my job is reviewing tv shows and films i've got like the new game of thrones show one and i'm like oh just scrolling away you know what i mean like i'm paying attention but you know slow burn i'm like oh what's going on instagram while they yeah, do yeah, this yeah, fight yeah, scene yeah. like yeah 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 and our attention it's such a um 
it's such a precious commodity mm. and it is being sold. Like these platforms are harvesting our attention. That's how they make their money. Mm. And they're all competing for it. And this this thing about, um, it has to be engaging in the first five seconds. Yeah. Mm. It's just gonna carry on and carry on and carry yeah. on. And now we've moved, if we take Instagram, we've moved from still images to snappy reels where every half a second the image changes because it has to be catchier and catchier. Yeah. And um, it's hurting us. Yeah. Like it's making us so much less mindful day by day. And we know yeah. like, we know the ways to take care of ourselves: are going outside, being in nature, oh, being still. Oh, I was gonna pills. Uh, <laughs> that might be yes, part of it for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we know that the ways that we feel good, it's so opposite to everything that we're doing online. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, what you're saying about the the snappy first like five seconds thing have you heard there's a new i guess phenomenon um called the millennial pause i was just gonna talk about gonna the millennial <laughs> pause what is that? so it's, i saw this tiktok about it and so essentially if you're a millennial it's like the first second you're like hi yeah right it's like a and it's breath a thing. you take before go you go through your videos and you will be millennial pausing i love yep. That. Why obsessed. is it a millennial pause? Because it's our it's only age us. group. <laughs> so oh. people said it's kind of come from the idea of like when we'd record videos back in the day, we'd be, you know, hit record, make sure it's recording or whatever, and then yeah. sit down and so talk. So the young kids are used to having stuff that switches on instantly, but we maybe learned with like camcorders or like old phones and it didn't. And so you do that millennial pause and it's like, wow. Yeah. I think- I, think, I feel so old. Yeah. We're not right old. Now. No, oh, it's, it's, it's it not, it's it's that, you know, with Gen Z or whatever the younger one beneath them are, is that with like, say like TikTok, for example, and Instagram, you've got the little timer that can like start exactly when you want to record. So, yeah. you know, as soon as it goes beep, you can just start talking. Whereas like you said, with us, I don't know what it is with like the, the old, the slightly older cameras yeah. where if you hit record and talk too fast, you go back to the video and you, you've, you've missed, missed it. it. So you could, there's a breather space and like it's like every te all pieces of technology. I turn my iPhone on now, it's like boom, it's on immediately. Instant. It's on yeah. instant. I remember when I was turning on my old BlackBerry back in the day, <laughs> but like hold the button, turn it on, wait about five minutes for it to <laughs> boot up. Um, yeah, so natural. It's a weird instinct thing where like we're even though we think our attention span is is low, I think we've still got that that instinct that says ah, let's slow it down, let's wait for everything to happen. Whereas it's worrying with younger kids are just like everything is instant gratification that's mm. the word I'm for yeah i'd love to hear what you think is empowering about social media because i don't i don't really have anything nice to say at the minute yeah we've been slagging it off for a, <laughs> sorry if a you good are social while. media and you are watching i'm sorry yes um mark mark we love you you are our leader um i, I, I say that out loud every so often so that my phone hears yeah we Just... love you mark <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> boost that real cream. mark <laughs> mm. what's happening to my views i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's the most empowering thing? What's the most empowering? I mean, thing? there are there are amazing yeah, things. There are right? there are. But I but I, um, I would say that the most empowering things were felt very there in the beginning and felt less there now. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for me, it was always like community based, sure. and and that's obviously how social media used to be marketed. Find your people, build your community, make actual connections. Yeah. And I did used to be able to do that. That has changed slightly mm -hmm. um i've been trying to bring it back to that it's hard mm -hmm. it's hard people don't want to like make connections no, it's now it's, no. it's changed from community to virality right so you're getting mm -hmm. shown to like random like, they don't necessarily care about showing your content to your followers people that are in your community they're like okay how quickly can this get on the explore page or yeah. the for you page or whatever you're right yeah. how can we get you even more followers yeah i think what's really interesting you said there about like it's about getting yourself on the discovery page for someone like me outside of my own followers I don't feel very safe on the internet. Okay, so I don't mm -hmm. use I don't use Twitter because I can't. It's not physically safe for me. But like that that virality of trying to push it, as soon as content does well for me, and I mean I mean well outside of the normal people that see it, I get abuse. Mm -hmm. I get people that wanna come and bring their opinions about who they think I am, who they think I represent. And I think there's this idea that in order to accept success, we have to accept abuse. I just wondering if you had any thoughts about that because I know you have an interesting relationship with the internet in that way, in a, in a different sense to me, but it comes from a, a marginalization, a difference that you're trying to convey. Mm. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, can you come back to me? I wanna, yeah. I wanna percolate on what you said and form yeah, thoughts. Yeah, of course. But yeah, if anyone else. 
when I speak to the empowering yeah, side of social media, um, that I found, and I don't know if you guys would agree, in terms of being in marginalized communities, is that people who are also in the same community, when they see you yeah. do well, even yeah. if it is that it's a snapshot of your life, they feel like they can do it too. Yeah. And they feel safe and they feel comfortable. So even though, okay, cool. I didn't like that picture of myself on the billboards. There are plenty of people that are trying to do billboard campaigns and stuff like that, that are like black men or black women that look at yep. me and go, oh, okay, so that's achievable. Yep. And I always did the same thing. Like I always looked up, looked up to like other um, black people, black men and women, and I'd say, wow, like that person can do it. They're like, you know, from, from East London as well. I can probably do it too. And you know, that, that when you can kind of continue that sort of ladder of inspiration, I feel like yeah. that's always, as, as you know, you can't control how everyone will view certain things, but there's always that sort of like silver lining where it's like, all right, well, that's, that's helped someone or they've seen if that person can do it, I can do it too. And then there's to be annoying and really irritating, but there's also like the flip side of that. When you feel the pressure to stand up and be seen as a marginalized person, yeah. there's a real fine line of, am I doing this for the right reasons or mm. do I feel like I don't have a choice? Yeah. That right. can be quite stressful. I find it so hard that with so much good has to come so much bad yes. because like what you just said about a video for you goes viral, right? And you get abused, mm -hmm. but there are so many people who will be inspired and empowered by that video by seeing you live your truth. Yeah. And that's what's so like, it frustrates me because the people who have control to, to like get rid of that abuse and to stop that from happening, don't do that. And that, like, how much would that help you and help the people that it's mm. empowering and inspiring? Safeguarding mm. is a really important thing. And that's probably a whole nother hour yeah. conversation. But, you know, we're talking about social versus reality. So the minute I go anywhere above normal amounts of views and the comments start rolling in, my job is to block and remove those comments. So that my followers, especially my 13s to 18s, don't see that. Yeah. I don't want them to tune in and think reality for them means abuse. Yeah. And so there's that almost like I have to protect my followers mm -hmm. to make sure that they're not put off before they even take that first step. Yeah. yeah. It's a really, a really difficult. Do, do you also find that people, I've kind of noticed it with my sort of like 13 to 18 year old followers, they tend to like almost echo whatever the most liked comment is in there. Yes. So if I've done a video, of like, I mean, I'll, my videos talk about movies and representation and stuff like that. And say I'm like, I'm watching a, a, a film with like a, um, a, power, a strong female lead or whatever. And I'm, I just kind of, I point out that I liked that detail. Sure, that, that may, maybe that'll go viral. Maybe tons of like women that the orphan presenting people that see that and they're like, yeah, that's cool. And they'll comment and stuff. But if it kind of goes viral on the wrong side of the internet or the wrong side of Instagram or TikTok or whatever, some of the comments will be that stupid, no men are superior to me, or that dumb Andrew Tate crap will kind of floods into the comments, be the most liked comment. And all of a sudden, like waves of people will kind of repeat that same comment. Yeah. Sometimes I I sometimes look at it and I think, I bet you look don't even mean that. You just see that's the most liked comments. So you yeah. think that's the popular thing to say. So I'll then repeat it. Mm. And you know, as much as I like to be aware of that sort of stuff, I'll see it in my comment section and I'm like, well, I'm going to be abused by all of the misogynists mm. now. And you know, it's, that's, it's like that we say about when things go too viral or sometimes you want to block and you want to delete and stuff like that then it kind of just goes out of your control yeah. and we're talking social versus reality would any of those people if they're in the same room as you say, say that to your nice. face yeah and that's how you know it's not real because there is no well there are some people out there and i have met them that will say what they think to your face but 95 percent of them they just wouldn't and i think mm. that's a real reminder of how false this is mm. i just want to come back to you megan have you have you had your thoughts? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, you did you did nail it. Um, I <laughs> my I think my only prominent thought is that uh, these platforms should provide therapy <laughs> for, for their free. creators. Yeah. Like you're you're saying that you face all those comments and monitor them and then delete them for the rest of your audience, but you've already had to see them. And I don't think yeah. people can underestimate the impact that has, because for a long time, it was almost like we weren't supposed to talk about the negative no, side we of it. Weren't. We were supposed to we just to get ahead, take right? it. Yeah, yeah, endure abuse. Oh, it's normal. We, yeah, we've yeah, 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 quote unquote yeah. asked for it because we have, have a platform because yeah. we've yeah. shared ourselves. And the more that we have that conversation and, and like you actually speak up on how that feels for you, that can only be a good thing, but also free therapy, please. Free therapy, quite, yeah. yeah, I just, I think well, one of the things that probably is important to get across is you, it never gets easy. No. It never, it's never not gonna hurt. And all it takes is, a, truly is like for me on my personal standpoint, like a couple of bad comments and I'm gonna feel crap for a couple of days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wanna put that, like one of my internal monologues that I come back to is I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna quit. I say that all the time to myself because that's how hard it is. Mm. And I think that brings us on really nicely 
we've talked about it a little bit, you know, boundaries. What are you doing to make this not want to make you quit? What are you doing to mean that you don't have to see a therapist every single day? What are your boundaries? What do they look like? I'll be completely honest, and it's kind of weird, the timing of this. It's something that recently I am quite, like, struggling quite a lot with. Sure. I don't want to point to a fucking blank space and put text on a screen that's going to go so fast it's going to give people a headache. Mm. And that's what's working right now, and I don't want to do that anymore. I want to be in a space where marginalized communities have the voice and the platform mm-hmm. to, to be and empower all those things. I want to be able to share my messaging. I want to be able to do all of this lovely stuff without everything taking over that's just too much for us to like absorb. Yeah. So I think at the moment, I'm definitely finding it really tricky to navigate what to post to the point where I'll just post what I've had for lunch because I'm sure there's someone out there who cares about that because I'd love to know what you had for lunch. Yeah. Do you know if, what I mean? Yeah, if you are having lunch right now, do tell us what you're having. <laughs> <laughs> With sides. Please. What drink did you have? <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's I just do. like, it's getting so intense in every single way, shape and form. And like, I, I had a campaign and it went global and it went, it couldn't, the success couldn't have gone any, like couldn't have Congrats. got any better. Thank you. But there were so many things with that, that, that again, behind the scenes, I felt like, but why me? Like, that's because we live in a world where someone like me would profit off something like that. And it's all a lot. There were people from marginalized communities who had campaigns that didn't do as well. Like, it's so stressful to exist on social media sometimes in in all of the, the aspects. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, right now I would say I'm struggling with it yeah. and how, how I wanna go around. I'm not posting every single day because I don't have anything yeah. to say now. Every single day, sure. it's a lot. I feel like you must be hot on boundaries, Terrell, because you've talked about what you're not prepared to share. Yeah, I try to, it's it's trying to like manage, manage a balance of like sure. how personal I want to get with with people in terms of like what I do. Not to say that, you know, people who like to talk, like to hear me talk about films wouldn't want to hear like my sort of personal stuff. Um, but it's more, I don't know, some, there are certain things I prefer to kind of keep, not necessarily private, but to my close friends or my mm. family and stuff like that. And I, I think I've benefited from keeping that sort of line. Um, in terms of like boundary beyond that, it, it, I mean, I'll, I'll struggle with a lot of things. One of my main things that I think I struggle with the most is is comparison, which is why, and I see it from both sides as well, where I compare myself to other people, but then I'm kind of conscious of like how I might appear to others online. You know, if I post on Instagram, I put my TikTok's my main platform where I post most of my reviews and stuff like that. But on Instagram, majority of the stuff that you might see there is like a picture of me at a premiere or at an event or doing some fun activity or whatever that I've been fortunate that I've been able to get with, with my platform. But, I love that you had to say fortunate. You worked to get yeah. there. Why do we apologize for where yeah. we are, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, like, I literally questioned why I was asked to present these. And my agent was like, because you're of what you've done. Yeah, we don't need it. to apologize for our success. Yeah, that, that's a whole another kettle of fish that I fall into more, more we'll be times back than next I'm proud of. with an hour on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I fall into that one more, more times than I'm proud of. Um, but that's because I'm, I'm so aware of. I know if I was a teenager looking at someone who's only posting that, sure. that sort of content, I'd be like, wow, like they must be like super rich and successful and happy. And they must like have everything figured out. And I'm like, no, in between that person, that person, I'm crying. I'm like depressed. Yes. I'm talking to someone, yeah. I'm like, you know, having conversations with my brother about how I'm feeling, you know what I mean? Um, so it, that, where I struggle with is is com- how I feel looking at other people and how I imagine my impact is, is having on other, um, from other people, especially the young mm. people. And I guess the... I'm not necessarily a boundary, but I guess uh, something I put in place to kind of make sure that I keep a healthy balance with is I'll post the good stuff, but occasionally I will be honest. And if I'm like, I can't post any videos today, I will make a little Instagram story being like, hey guys, I'm having a bad mental health day. Um, It can be a small little post with just text on screen saying that I'm going through that or whatever and I can't post for the next couple of days. I don't even need to know what the response was to that, but at least in my mind, I'm letting my audience know that I'm still a human you know, like you, you were talking about like being seen as characters. There is little things that I like to do, posting things like that to kind of remind you, yeah, okay, cool. You might see the, the glam, the, the fun stuff or whatever, but keep in mind that I'm still a person just sure. like you and my struggles are the same as you. And yes, I worked hard to get here. You can work hard to get here too, but there's a lot of struggles along the way. Yeah, And you know, it's, it's a balance of keeping honest, but not too honest, I guess. Almost like that sort of like, if I let you in every now and then, you're not going to ask for it all the time. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Mm-hmm. What are boundaries that like, for you because if you responded to everyone you'd never stop right platform your size i can't imagine how you do it there with that many people on the end of the phone how do you press post how do you do that (laughs) (laughs) 
um, used to be with a lot of overthinking and panic attacks and hours and hours spent questioning things. Sure. I'm thankfully not in that place anymore because Correct. I learned over the years that yeah. you, you can't please all the people. And if no, you, you try to, you lose yourself. Mm -hmm. Not willing to lose myself anymore. I think for me, genuinely, the, the only way to figure out your boundary is constant reflection and honesty yeah. with yourself about why you are doing the things that you are doing. And, yeah. you know, if you, um, if you are performing the character, if you're reaching for the virality and, and you get that boost, you feel those chemicals. Yeah, it's great at the time, but if it's not you, it will separate you from yourself and mm. you'll feel the yeah. impact of that long term. And it's not, it's not worth it. And that took me, that took me quite a while to figure out. And it's just honesty, it's honesty with yourself. And for me, a massive learning curve was accepting that I'm fucking rude. Um, accepting that I'm small. I am yeah. a tiny speck. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am not that significant. Just yes. because a lot of people follow me on the internet, yeah. that comes with this big pressure of, you must always have the right answers. You must yeah. always know what to say. You Can't are this get it wrong. Big, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And allowing myself to get it wrong, yeah. to yeah. not know be everything, yeah. to be yeah, yeah. human and small and fallible. You have to allow yourself that offline as much as you can and online if you're feeling brave enough because people will have something to say about it. Yeah. Mm. But the more people that do, that aren't afraid to get it wrong and show up in that way, again, if safeguarding was put in place, imagine how much nicer social media would be. Honestly. Yeah. Honestly. But would nicer social media make us much money? No. no. <laughs> Which is saying. why we're torn between going viral and holding our integrity, I guess. Yeah. You mean, you I'll go to... with integrity for now, but it's yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've been holding your integrity for, for so long and then you're like, well, I've not had a lot of views recently and by extension, I've not had a lot of brand deals to pay my bills and pay mm -hmm. my rent. Yeah. And you were like, okay, well now I need to kind of sell my soul to get my views yeah. and get yeah. myself back into it. And yeah, no, nah, so yeah. yin yang. So, so ha sorry, go on. No, you go. I was just gonna say, so as creators, how does the platform have to change in order to reward integrity? It needs to stop making us depressed. Mm. I don't think it will change. I think it's only gonna get worse, which is why I think we're in this okay. predicament at the, yeah. sorry to be really like depressing about it, mm. but they've not done much to help so far. No, well, I think, you know, I think it's, it's sometimes like, we're kind of going back to like how algorithms work, you know, community versus virality. I understand from the, the app's point of view, they want to get loads of people loads of views so that those people want to use the app so that they can get loads of views too and complete this endless cycle. But I feel like if the algorithm favored, you know, the watch time of your followers, the, in the engagement of your followers and people in your community first, yeah. and your videos only blew up within, say you have maybe 10,000 followers or 20 or 100, it blows up within that bubble first so that all of your followers, that people that have supported you can see your content first. Yeah. That way, when it comes to like, oh, we're gonna show it to people of similar interests, you know at least, okay, cool, they're gonna be in the same sort of vein as my followers, as opposed to, oh, you use that hashtag? Well, get ready to get attacked by all the racists. And you know, yeah. I, mean, yeah. um, I think there is there is a way to favor community. If your community is, is, is strong, if you actually say, okay, cool. If a random person that doesn't follow you um, watches your video all the way through, you can get X amount of push into the algorithm. But if your follower that's followed you for about 10 years watches mm -hmm. your video through, likes it, comments and shares in it, okay, cool. We're gonna show it to all the rest of your followers and rewards those people, reward that community more so than just like, wow, I'm viral now. It so used to be like that though, didn't it? It did. Mm. Like if I always think if I had kids, I want them to see your viral video, your viral video, your viral video, whatever that looks like, right? But those viral videos right now are not gonna be the videos that they're gonna see. No. No. I've got so many of my close friends being like, I never see your videos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Viral, who's she? I haven't yeah. seen her in years. <laughs> <laughs> so it's clear that like, when we talk about social versus reality, it is whether we want to or not, it's gonna affect our mental health. I don't think we've got enough time to really get into the depths of the conversations that we're having with our therapist. Emily, I love you, thanks so much. Um, but I would love to know like, like a small thing that you do to manage your mental health online, social versus reality, if you have even that sort of sound bite, if you haven't figured it out, I think that's important to hear too. I think um, echoing what Megan said about like checking back in with yourself. Yes. 
like this week I've kind of not the past week I haven't really been online because I felt like I didn't have anything to say and I was sure. kind of sort of working out I don't owe anyone an apology for that I don't need to explain myself I don't need to justify why I've been feeling a certain way um the priority is me and how I feel in that moment and I feel like I did that this week so I took a bit of a step back so in whatever way it works for you to check in with yourself mm. and just like realign with what it is that you care about and what you want to put out into the world forgetting social media forgetting the numbers forgetting the following mm. like even if it's just for a day i do think that helps to kind of rein it back a bit yeah yeah, so, yeah i was gonna be more or less the same sentiment i was just gonna say i'd switch off yeah um and i'm actually very comfortable just like, completely coming off especially like i mean as like creators online the job is to post on social media. The job is to actively check your following and make check your analytics and make sure, sure. you're posting on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, what, what have you. And when, if, if it was anyone else, if, you know, work, everyone working a nine to five, their job is to go into the office come, and then come yeah, home and go to sleep. Yeah. They, they, in manner of speaking, switch off because they have to because the security of the office building will kick them out. But in manner of speaking, you've got to kind kick of- yourself out. Kick yourself out, remove right? yourself from it. You know, Be I mean? your own security guard. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a big like proponent of just like removing yourself from a situation. If you- aren't in the right place to post content then just Leave. don't and step away there are other ways of kind of getting around issues sure. yes there is a pressure of when it's your job you've got to give it yeah. undivided attention but i think there are ways i mean ideally social platforms would pay the creators more so you don't have to but there are ways to kind of have that healthy balance take a step back take time for yourself take a holiday you know what i mean this it's social holiday, is what's that <laughs> God. i was just about to say i do really want to acknowledge the fact that I feel privileged that I could even just remove myself from a week. Do you know what I mean? Some yeah. people don't have that option. Well, that's true. I can't that's remember true. the last time I've not, wasn't there. Well, mm -hmm. when I say like, do you know what I mean? Like to a certain extent, take a step back yeah. for yeah. a full five days. That's, yeah. a, I'm privileged to be able to do that. Yeah. Not in terms of, I've not done anything for my job in those five days, but mm. I've, I've been in a position where I can step back from posting on social media and knowing that a brand deal is in the pipeline or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Not everybody has that option. Yeah, for, no, for sure. And there, there's definitely a privilege of like, I don't have to post every single day because I know I'm in emails with this person that's probably gonna get me the pay that I need for the month. And so I'm, I'm good not posting on this Wednesday and putting myself through hell. Um, but I think it's, when, you know, when I say holiday, I almost just mean just switch your phone off or just even if you need to delete the app from your phone, it doesn't have to be for a long period of time, but like, once you're aware that you can do other stuff outside of just posting online and scrolling yeah. through everything like that, mm. there's a, a bevy of things you can kind of get done that just takes care of yourself first yeah, and like then come back your to your taxes, job. Pay after. tax kids. Because <laughs> yeah. it builds up and it's not good if you don't do it. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> bevy is a really underused word. Bevy. I just really appreciate yeah. when you said there's a bevy of a things. A bevy of things. There's a bevy of what things. What are your bevy of things that you would do? My bevy includes mainly doing things that make me feel like myself yes. and not my online self, yes. my actual self. I think, um, especially for creators who started with a purpose, yes. who got online because they wanted to spread a message mm -hmm. um, and they what had something to say. What was my message? You know, it was just um, be gay, do crime. Yeah, nice. mine was to empower one person to be there in ultimate self i have it on a post-it note it's disgusting okay that's adorable Thank um you, yeah, you gave I a serious it. answer right yeah i was gonna say does that make the be gay do crime feel a bit <laughs> no that actually wasn't actually a serious answer your serious answer yeah no that. me too oh, you're all gay and do crime gay criminals amazing <laughs> <laughs> do crime within the law where you won't get caught the police are but not be as gay our as friend you yeah, yeah, yeah. uh no i think if you started with a purpose it is really really important to whenever you can do things that bring you back to that and yes. that aren't big and shiny and yes. online and viral, small community things. Even just having a conversation with one person where you genuinely dig into it and you feel like you can hear them and support mm, them, yeah. that needs to be as valuable as a post that gets 300,000 yeah. views. Absolutely. That has to be, you, ha you have to mm -hmm. like, and, it, and it, it doesn't, you won't get the same hit. You don't get the same chemical reward. But unless you retrain your brain to, to to see the value in those small moments, then you lose yourself. Yeah, you're yeah. not a character anymore. When you have those conversations, you remind yourself of your humanity. Mm -hmm. You're not just like an avatar that just racks up these little followers and likes or whatever that mean basically nothing in grand scheme of things. Thank you so much for sharing no, so thank fun you. with me. Thank you. Thank and you. authentic with me. Essentially what we're saying is it is real, but it's not real. You can make it more real, but it's also not real either. <laughs> <laughs> Great takeaway. And like we're trying really hard, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it and is. also like <laughs> the reality is not everyone is gonna show you everything and yeah. that is still real. Yeah. And we owe no one anything. And I 
really hope you all take that on board thank you so much for joining us thank you for all listening and thank you to you for sharing so vulnerably i'm so pleased that you've been here with me if you've loved what i have done today i have been ben peachy and if you didn't i have been jenna collins thank you and goodbye <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha